So hello, my name is Maria. <clears throat> I recently finished my master's at the Tallinn University of Technology. And I'm going to present you some of the work that I did a few years ago on detecting schizophrenia from MRI, from MRI images using machine learning. So schizophrenia is a very serious disorder. It affects about 1% of the population. So it's actually very widespread. And uh, we would like to think about how we can design novel early interventions that have been effective, for example, in HIV, cancer, and stroke, how we can do the same type of things in schizophrenia. And the necessary prerequisite for that is that we're able to detect the disease early and intervene early. So th this research is a, is a small step in that direction. Uh, and this is what this presentation is about. So uh, 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 an important biomarker for schizophrenia is uh, the cortical thickness values. And it has been uh, shown in several studies that there is widespread reduction in cortical thickness in schizophrenia. And so we would like to see whether we can use these patterns of cortical thickness reduction to distinguish, computationally distinguish patients from, with schizophrenia from normal controls. And uh, so we have this small, quite small medical data set uh, with 42 patients uh, with schizophrenia and 48 matched controls. And uh, we had structural MRI data from which we extracted cortical thickness distribution all over the brain. But in the model for classification, we only used the distribution in the frontal lobes. And so then we used a generative model, which is basically a model for quantifying statistical patterns in, um, in, in data sets. So the first stage is unsupervised. So we're not l using the labels at that stage. And we just want to see uh, the statistical structure in the samples and later use that statistical structure to better classify the samples. So, uh, so this, the workflow is like that. You apply the generative model, you extract patterns, and then you use those patterns to, to classify uh, the patients. And so, uh, well, schizophrenia is a very complex disease, and uh, people actually think that it may be many separate diseases which have different underlying disease mechanisms, but you, we, uh, clinically, we observe only the symptoms, so we put people in the same bucket who are quite different in terms of the, in, in terms of the disease mechanisms. So with that regard, and the regard that there, the, the, the data set was quite small, we achieved 83% classification accuracy with the leave one out protocol, meaning that to classify, we first trained on all but one sample and classified on the remaining sample uh, and did that for all of the samples. And that gives 83% classification accuracy. Uh, but the interesting thing is that you can use the generative model, the statistical model, to create visualizations of the data, which I think uh, is, might be useful clinically. Uh, so here you see a visualization where the blue uh, dots are patients and the red dots are controls. So the model, like, um, you can see that these points cluster in the model. So the model embeds similar data points <coughs> close by on the grid. And you can see that even though the, the generative model didn't, didn't use class labels, it still, it, it still makes it possible to view clusterings or groupings in the data. So for example, you can see that there are two different groups of schizophrenic patients. And we don't really know yet what that means, so we haven't linked that to any kind of clinical analysis, but it's just uh, an indication that there may be some heterogeneity in the disease uh, that, uh, that is usefully captured by, by a statistical model. So uh, the initial results are prom promising, but of course more work is needed. For example, here the, we, we didn't really stratify the data according to how old people are, et cetera. So there is work that indicates that the cortical thickness shows changes throughout the disease progression. So we would like to see whether we can capture that early on in development, whether the, early in the development there are patterns that we can use to distinguish whether a person has risk for schizophrenia. So that's the main promise, but of course these are very initial results and much more work is needed. So thank you so much.